And I'm standing down in front of the bunk here now. This is where we put the high moisture corn in. We ended up getting that pretty full. We come over to side of the wall there with the auger and then the beauty with putting uh, high moisture corn into this bunk is it's on a lower level than what the bunks are up above and we can set our roller mill up and I kind of explained that here in a previous video and I'll put a card in up above here um, that goes back to when we were starting to fill the bunk um, earlier on this fall but we had better weather when we covered that bunk yesterday here at the end of December than when we were chopping corn and put corn silage into that bunk. I'll put a small clip in here uh, from when we were covering that bunk there. It was actually snowing the whole time. While we were covering it, it made for a miserable day of not only covering bunk, but our bunk. Of course, we're on a pretty good hill here. The wind blows. Uh, so I didn't video any of that when we covered this bunk here yesterday because the audio would have been all screwed up. But it is nice and calm and rather pleasant here this morning. You can see the weeds that we have right there that should be cleaned up and gotten out of there. They're barely moving because it is so calm here. So we're going to run down the shop now. I've got some stuff that I have to do to the tractor that's on the mixer wagon. Um, I'm having an issue with getting battery power from the tractor to the uh, mixer scale battery so we're going to run down the shop and do a few things in the shop here today well we got some odds and ends to do today we have um, jockey tractors around on mixers here we've got 7730 which is obviously a four-wheel drive tractor that we had duels on and we took the duels off of the other day so that we could put this tractor on the mixer and then um, we are done with corn now so we're going to get into um, putting the liner kit into the red mixer wagon which is a supreme 1200 this is also a supreme 1200 that we rebuilt uh, last year and then we ended up painting it white with the black spots on it to look like a cow but on these mixer wagons they have a scale unit on there there's a 12 volt battery that powers um, the scale and then what we do is we run a trickle charge off of the tractor through the seven way RV plug here and all that gets is power off the main um, 12 volt accessory that's in this um, plug here but this morning the um, battery was low battery warning was flashing on the monitor and I've got to figure out what's going on there. I'm getting power from the tractor but I think when they switched this mixer around the other day I think they pulled too hard on the cord so we've got to get this cord apart and uh, figure out why it's not getting uh, juice from the tractor. Now these um, scale monitors here where we obviously use that to to load our different ingredients so we get the proper amount of weight in there but we never shut the scale off the batteries enough to keep going for that runs the scale for like maybe two three days if you've got a decent battery in there but we keep it hooked to the tractor so that it's constantly um, charging that battery up and then um, we have found through the years that if we don't touch this uh, touch pad at all here, they're just soft buttons on there. It kind of makes the scale head monitor uh, last longer. Years ago on a harsh mixer wagon, which was the same scale head more or less, a Digistar uh, monitor, we were having trouble with moisture getting inside the display and we felt that what was happening was from turning the uh, uh, monitor on and off we were cracking that um, soft pad there and water moisture was getting in but this mixer will be five years old soon and that that scale other than when we put the liner kit in has never been shut off other than you know switching the battery out or some damn thing but we leave it on all the time so that has got the original backlight in it and display and everything out so that is original and um, they've got a pretty good um, 
backlight to them, if you will. They got a pretty good amount of life left to them. So, uh, yeah. So we're gonna get uh, I'm gonna get this figured out. It is warm enough here now that we've been washing equipment. We're gonna get working on this. We got some equipment to jockey around, and uh, I want to get the chopper inside here and get that ready to get cleaned up. I've got to pull the kernel processor and whatnot out of that, and we're just gonna get after a few odds and ends here today. Ah, that was an easy fix. I didn't even video it. It was just the prongs on the plug were fitting loose into the actual plug end. So, getting the combine switched over to beans now. Nate and Kerr are up here in the bunk blowing it off. Just got to check it over and switch it over to beans, right, Nader? Yep. What'd your air compressor do? Quit? Yeah. I'm okay, you got the stone the trap clean? We're just pawing everything out right now. I'm going to do that now. Okay. Alright. Alright, just got to drop that grate down. and That's probably froze up in there, but just opening the stone trap up here. Get a peek up in there. Yeah, that's cute. Alright, so. Right? Right. Yep. So we just got a few things to do to it, and then when we can sneak into the beans, it'll be ready. So, get everything cleaned up here. They're just about ready on it. So, we'll just look over a few things, and we'll be ready to do beans when the weather suits us here. Ah, they're just getting fired back up with that compressor now to get that combine set. I've got a marker light issue to work on on the C5 now. We're going to pull that in and see if we can't get that figured out. I've got a basketball game to go to this afternoon so I've got a little bit of time and then I'll have to get to that and finish what's going on afterwards. So get the C5 fired up and get it inside and see why the marker lights ain't working on the trailer. All right, we've got the chopper in the shop here now. We're getting ready to wash it, but before we wash it, we're gonna pull the kernel processor out of it. That sits in behind the cab here. That is that unit right there. We're gonna get that out. We're gonna get a couple other things done to it here. We've got a plate that goes in underneath the feed rolls that keeps the ears of corn from falling through. So we're gonna get that plate out of there so that we can get this thing all cleaned up. Then we're going to take this unit to CAS Equipment. Um, they're going to look things over on this. And there's a wire harness that is on the um, cutter head up front here that they're going to look into. Uh, the harvest slab on this hasn't worked like it's supposed to. So they're going to look that over and uh, check over a couple other things so that this thing is completely ready to go for 2020. Another thing that um, we're working on here is this roller mill. Um, we're getting the blower back onto this. We had this blower off in there when we were using this unit to put corn in the bunk. So this is the blower that you'd hook up to um, the silo pipe so that we could fill the silo. We just pull this blower off so that we can dump it into an auger and go into the bunk. So that's just about on there. This got cleaned up the other day. we got a shield to put back on there, run a grease gun around it, and then this thing will be uh, ready to be put away and um, used another year here. All right, we're up inside this area here where the KP goes. And there is a crank to crank this KP up out of there. And I've got it about half cranked out now. And then we'll get the belts off here. Then we can hook up the winch to grab onto it and carry it out of the chopper and set it onto the floor.
say, was the head still on it or off? The head was still on it. But there's all this stuff. I mean, there's chaff down on it right here, so it right. just just didn't do too good at all. So. Did you say it goes, I. Alright, go off a little bit. Take that bolt out of that clevis there. So prior to chopping corn, we took this this bar out. This bar sets in. This bar sets in. Oh come on! Right in here, uh, like that. So you take this bar out like this, and then you set this panel in here for chopping corn that's on underneath the feed rolls and it keeps the ears of corn. And every once in a while you'll get one or two that fall. So we've removed this panel here because we're done chopping corn. We need to put this one back in. And what we have is a broken, what did I do with it? Oh, here it is, right here. 
a broken uh, stud mount. So this gets welded in uh, right here. And this has come off of um, come off of the chopper head here. So this is just a weld on uh, threaded stud holder. We're gonna set that into place here like this. We need to put that welded into place here. Right there. Well done, man. I'm going to put another bead on this other one, too. Okay, so we've got those tacked in there. Now we can set our bar back in there. Now this bar is not as tight as that plate, but you will get from time to time, you'll get um, here's a cord that kind of fall out, so that's why they offer that flat panel for the end of that leave. All right, the other thing we've got to do here, we've got to take our extended uh, spout off. Jay's working on that right now. We take that one section off, that is right here from where this flopper bolts on to the end there up to about the middle and i don't know how long i think that's like eight feet long we take that section out and put that one in for doing hay the longer spout enables the um, wider corn head to go on the chopper and you can get the corn over into the truck so we can't run this spout here for hay. We tried it for hay, but there's not enough of an air dam in there. And the haylage will drop down a little bit and it'll get caught on the bottom part of that chute and you'll plug the spout. So we've had that happen before. Uh, that pipe there is aluminum with a hard ox liner in the top of it. And it's aluminum to make that uh, light. And it has to have that um, bottom put on the pipe there for strength so if we could have could put some holes in that we could probably get it to work for hay but it doesn't so we're going to put the shorter spout on there now so if you got them cap screws all off in there jay yeah just taking a keep two in until i'm ready to drop it okay okay so we have the um, short spout on there the spout that we use for hay KP's out we've got the whole machine all blown off so all the dry heavy stuff is knocked down we just gotta run around it quick with the pressure washer here um, it's really not that dirty but it needs gone over uh, with the pressure washer so we're gonna wash it here quick and then we're gonna get it back in the shop We've got to run down and grab the corn head, and we've got to wash uh, the corn head as well. The corn head's not all that bad, but um, it is what it is. So we've got a little bit of um, corn slop there on the on the end of the spout to wash off, and mainly the whole thing is just going to be rinsing, rinsing down. We use the big compressor here to blow all the crap off of it. And then we've got to throw some paint on here. We've got some paint that is flaked off off of here. So we'll have to get some paint on there and um, get it looking like new again. So I'm going to run down and get the corn head now and bring that up and uh, wash that at the same time.
Well, that's gonna do it. We got this all cleaned up and it's, um, we're out of daylight now. It's Monday night, it's about, yeah, it's just a little after six. So, got going a little bit later on than I thought. Um, getting this thing completely washed. We ended up switching the chopper neck over so we've got the spout on there for hay. The corn spout is a lot longer so that you've got enough distance to have the trucks drive alongside. We got the corn head all cleaned up here. Chopper's completely done. And then we'll take this thing to Kaz uh, here tomorrow providing that the roads are decent. Um, I don't want to run this if we've got any salt on the road. So with that being said, folks, that's going to do it for this video. We will catch you at the next one. I want to thank you for watching. Remember to drop me a comment down below and leave me a thumbs up if you like this video. Take it easy, folks.